Father, we thank you. We exalt your name for the opportunity to serve you. For us to be able to serve you in the kingdom of God, Father, is a great privilege and opportunity. Lord, we thank you. We exalt your name, Lord. Father, we thank you for glorious beauty of this entire world that you are giving to us, that we live inside. And of course, the world to come, that new Jerusalem. Father, accept our thanks in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you tonight for helping us to remain in your path. For helping us to even remain in faith is a great privilege indeed. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, for you have broken the gate of rats and you have cut the bars of iron asunder. Father, we thank you because you have broken the bond of sin and you have brought us into fellowship with you. Oh, Father, we thank you. We exalt your name. Thank you, Lord, because you have overcome death and opened the gate of eternal life unto us. It's a great privilege indeed. Father, we thank you. Thank you because the word says, where two or three are gathered together in your name, near your presence will be. Therefore, Lord, tonight, we ask for your only presence in our midst. Lord, let your presence more than ever before overshadow us individually and collectively where we are connected to this program tonight. In the name of Jesus, do what only you can do in our midst. Increase our faith. Lord, increase our faith in you. And give us the power to be able to exercise our faith. To put our faith in action. Father, empower us to do so. Thank you, Holy Father. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Beloved people of God, in Revelation 4 11, say, Thou art worthy, O Lord. Thou art worthy. is worthy of our praises. God is worthy of our worship. Psalm 19 verse 1 says, Heavens declare the glory of God. And, beloved, let's join the heavenly host tonight to declare that glory of God in our various locations connected to this program. Let's worship God to open the door of God's presence and his inexhaustible blessings into our life tonight. We are actually created to worship God. I want you to understand this very, very well. As we worship God tonight and pray, I stand by the authority of heaven, by the power in the blood of Jesus, and I decree that as we started this year on a glorious note, we shall all end this year on a glorious note. In the name of Jesus, this year 2024 shall be your best year on earth. In the name of Jesus, it shall be a sweet memorial for you and your entire family. In the name of Jesus, you shall achieve your divine purpose and you will experience all round fulfillment in this year 2024. The vision of God for Eka, for the chairman of Eka, shall be accomplished this year. In the name of Jesus, throughout this year and beyond, your life shall bring praise, honor, and glory to God in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So tonight, I want you to lift up your two hands as you worship God in spirit and in truth. Thank you, Father. I worship you, Almighty God. There is none like you. I worship you, O Prince of Peace. That is all I want to do. And I give you praise. For you are my righteousness. You are my righteousness, I worship you, almighty God. There is none like you, there is none, there is none like you, Lord. 
There is none like you, Lord. There is none like you. No one has touched my heart like you do. I can search throughout it a minute long and found there is none like you. Thank you, Father. You are worthy, O Lord. You are worthy, O Lord. Invisible God, my miracle worker. You are worthy, O Lord. You are worthy, you are worthy, O Lord. O Lord, you are worthy, O Lord. Invisible God, my miracle worker. You are worthy, O Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. There is none like you. There is none that is holy as you. You are great, you are marvelous, you are mighty. Your power is the absolute power. Father, you are great. We give you praise. We worship you. We exalt you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for your mighty presence in our midst tonight. We exalt your name. Thank you, Holy Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Father, we thank you for your mercy upon the entire Eka family. Thank you, Lord, for your love, for your loving kindness. Thank you for all the ways you have intervened in the affairs of Eka. Father, we thank you for your divine plan and purpose for establishing the Eka body of Christ. Father, we thank you because you will not leave us in Eka, nor forsake us. Thank you, Lord, because you have brought us in Eka to a place of maturity, to a place of deeper life. Father, we thank you for all the blessings that are bestowed among all the church denominations represented in Eka. Father, we thank you for the wonderful love that you have shown us. Thank you, Lord, for you are great and you are greatly to be praised. Thank you, Father, for you are trustworthy and you will help your own. Father, we thank you for helping us in Eka. We are so thankful to you. We give you praise. Accept our thanks in the name of Jesus. Tonight, O Lord, open our understanding. Teach us from your throne of grace. Help us to be able to, not only to have faith, but to exercise our faith. Thank you, Holy Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. You are all welcome, welcome tonight. All of us that are connected to this program tonight, I want to say thank you and God bless you for connecting all the pastors, uh -huh. the overseers in Eka, the leadership of Eka, everyone that has connected tonight, I welcome you all to this nightly prayer and devotion. God will continue to bless us all in Jesus' name. As we go along, and you have a special prayer request that you want us to be praying for, to be interceding for, don't hesitate to just write it and send it to us. We shall continue to pray for you. It shall be well with you and in your entire family. Thank you, Holy Father, for in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Last month, we were given a topic titled Prayer the last two months. But tonight, we have a topic before us called Faith. F-A-I-T-H. Faith. The topic before us is titled Faith. Beloved, Faith. According to Hebrews 11, let's open our Bible to Hebrews 11. The topic we are treating tonight is titled Faith. That's the topic. Hebrews, I'm going to read Hebrews 11 from verse 1 to 10. Hebrews chapter 11 from verse 1 to 10. You can open your Bible there 
Hebrews 11, 1 to 10. Now, faith is the substance of things that you hope for. Say, it is the evidence of things that you have not seen. Did you see that? Faith is the substance of what I have seen, not seen. Faith is the substance of things that you hope for. And our hope as Christians, believers, born again, spirit filled, is in Christ Jesus. Jesus is our hope. So, faith is the substance of things that you hope for. It is the evidence of things that you have not seen. Now, the Bible says, by for by it, the elders obtain good report. So, through faith, we understand that, we understand that the world were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Do you see that? Verse 4. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than came, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, and God testified of his gift, and by it he been dead. Yes, spoke stated. He was dead, Abel was dead, but his blood began to speak. Why? Because he had faith in God. Five, by faith, he not was translated that he should not see death and he was not found because God has translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. And pray for somebody connected to this program tonight. Your life shall please God. In the name of Jesus. Verse 6. But without faith, now look at that. The opposite now. Say, but without that faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Verse 7. By faith, Noah, being warned of God, of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an act to the saving of his house uh -huh. by thee which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. Verse 8. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go, to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, he obeyed and he went out not knowing with that he went. Did you see that? Now, by faith, he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacle with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs within of the same promise. Look at verse 10. For he looked for a city which had foundation, whose builder and maker is God. He is looking for a city which had foundation, whose builder and maker is God Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth, the possessor of the universe. Beloved people of God, this is a powerful scripture I've read to you now. Beloved, I'm looking tonight as what I call the power of violent faith. Beloved, the power of violent faith. We need violent faith in our time, beloved. In Hebrews chapter 11, when you read verse 11 there, say, through faith also, Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed, beloved, and was delivered of a child when she was past age. So she has passed the age of delivery. She has passed the age of menopause. She could not. I mean, ordinarily, she was not supposed to, to be able to deliver, but by faith. Because she judged him faithful 
who are promised. The, she joins in faithful who are promised. Look at the three Hebrew men. The three Hebrew men. Let's look at them as a case study here. Daniel chapter 3, verse 14 to 18. Daniel chapter 3, 14 to 18. Uh -huh. Daniel chapter 3. Let's open our Bible then. Daniel chapter 3, verses 14 to 18. Nebuchadnezzar speak and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, do not ye serve my God, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? Now, if ye be ready, that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flutes, harp, sabbat, forestry, and dulcimer, man, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the image which have made. Say, well, but if ye worship not, ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of the burning fairy furnace. And who is it? Who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hand? Did you see that? Verse 16. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God who is up is able to deliver us from the burning fairy furnace, and he will deliver us. That's the faith. Did you see that? Say, he will deliver us out of thy hand, O king. Look at verse 18. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy God, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Violent faith. They exercise violent faith here. Even if God will not save us, we are still not going to bow to your burning fairy furnace. Beloved, did God save them? Yes. God saved them. They said, Our God is able to deliver you, us. That's why we sing a song. He's able, he's able. I know my God is able. I know my God is able to carry me through. He is able, he is able, he is able. I know my God is able. I know my God is able to carry me through. Beloved, this is stubborn faith. The faith of if I perish, I perish. Like Esther said, she said, if I perish, I perish. She went to meet the king unlawfully, and she did not perish. That is faith. But in Matthew chapter 17, when you read verse 20, say, if you have faith, Jesus is talking now. Say, if you will have faith, as the grain of mustard seed. Our Lord Jesus Christ is talking about the quantity of your faith. The mustard seed. Never get discouraged. That's the name. If you have faith like the mustard seed, it's talking about violent faith. Because mustard seed never gets discouraged. It keeps growing. It keeps growing. No matter what you do to it, it keeps growing. That's what our faith should be. Because that is the kind of faith God wants us to exercise as believers. But again, Christians, spiritual people of God, beloved people of God. Now, what is faith? Let's define that. Because before we talk about violence, what is faith? Number one, faith is a holy decision that is married to violent determination. You have only decision you have made. You are now married it, married it to violent determination. That's what you call faith. What is faith? Number two, faith is simple confidence that God will fulfill what he has promised. You have that confidence in you that God will surely fulfill what he has promised. For example, now, God has promised Eka a land 
and to be able to build the structure. We now have faith in God for what He has promised that He will surely do it. Beloved, not minding what you are seeing in the physical. Beloved, what is faith? Faith is to believe what you do not see. You have not seen it, but you believe it. Uh -huh. We have not seen the real structure of the building of heaven now. But we have seen it in the spirit. Because seeing it in the spirit is what made us to go to the level of having the plan for it. Having the dummy of the structure of that building. That is what you call faith. Beloved, they are let me give you an example now. Man says, sees is to believe. That is, unbelievers, they believe that they have to see forth before they can believe. But God says, believe first, and then you can see. So, in Christ, we have to believe him first for what he can do before we can now see it in the physical realm. Let me describe Hebrews 1 man for you. Now faith is the substance of things that you hope for. It is the evidence of what you have not seen. Now, things that you hope for is the hope that we have in Christ Jesus. That is certain. We have our hope in Christ Jesus. Now, the evidence of things you have not seen, the evidence are the testimonies that you have been listening to. You have heard that God has done this for this. God has done this for that. Those are the evidence that you have. The testimonies. Uh -huh. So when you put them together, you will be able to have faith to exercise your own faith to get it. For example now, Eckhart believed that God has given other church denominations the power to be able to build their own. They have seen that as a testimony. Eckhart is not an exception. God will surely do it for Eckhart too. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So, faith is to believe what you have not seen. You have to believe it. Beloved, for what is faith? Faith is a person stepping out to the unknown. You are stepping out to what you do not know about. To obey God's command. God gives you a command. He gives you a specific instruction. And you are going by that instruction. That is what you call faith. Look at the man of God, Elijah. God told him, he said, I have commanded the raven to feed you. So he, he went on that instruction to the raven. Then the Lord said again, I have commanded the widow to feed you. He went towards the middle. So that is exercising of his faith. Beloved, God told Abraham, get out of your father's house. Get out of your kindred. Uh -huh. Get out of your family. To a place I'm going to show you. Beloved, Abraham obeyed. He went with his faith. Beloved, number five. What is faith? Faith is literal force that converts what we desire in our heart to what we eventually possess. It converts our heart desire to what we eventually possess. I want you to understand this very well. The Bible said, the Lord said, the light of said in me first, and then I will give you the desire of your heart. So once you have that desire for God, you delight yourself in God, he will surely give you the desire of your heart. I'm praying for somebody here tonight. God will give you the desire of your heart. In the name of Jesus. Beloved, what is faith? Number six. Faith is an, is an all-important element in the believer's journey. Beloved, in our journey as believers, that is why the Bible says, the just shall live by faith. So we live every day by the faith that we have in Christ Jesus. The just shall live by faith. So in our Christian journey, faith is an element 
that we hold on to in our Christian journey. Beloved, those who are spiritually matured, they know that the demand of faith is that you believe even when you have not seen it. That's the demand of faith. You believe even when you have not really seen it coming. Beloved people of God, what is faith? Number seven, faith is to call those things which are not as though they were. That, beloved, has to do with our confession. You call those things which are not, although they are not, uh -huh, as if they are. For example, now, the Bible says, let the weak say that I am strong. It's not a lie. What the Bible is trying to tell us is that the weak dead person, somebody that is weak, should not advertise his weakness and begin to hold black and all over the place that is weak, is weak. No. Say, let the weak exercise his violent faith and say it out, confess it, that I am strong. You know that you are feeling weak inside, but you are saying it with boldness. I am strong. I am strong. That's why we sang the song. We say, I'm bold. I'm strong. For the Lord my God is with me. Uh -huh. I'm bold. Uh -huh. I'm stronger. For the Lord my God is with me. Hallelujah. I am not ashamed. Hallelujah. I am not afraid. Because I walk in faith and victory. Because I walk in faith and victory. For the Lord, my God, is with me. That's why we sing that song, beloved. Number eight, what is faith? Faith, beloved, sees the invisible, believe the incredible, and achieve the impossible. Say, faith, we see the invisible, it will believe the incredible and achieve the impossible. Beloved people of God, faith is not only believing that God can do certain things, but knowing that God will do it. You are not only believing that God can do certain things, but you know, you know it, that God will do it. Beloved, for example now, David said, God has helped me to kill the lion and bear it. Say, this or circumcised Philistines shall be like one of them. So David believed that he, he will surely kill you that. Beloved, doubt we say, can God do it? That is doubting. You are still doubting when you say, can God really do it for me? You are doubting. But faith, we say, God can do all things. That's why the Bible says, Philippians 4 13, say, I can do all things. Through Christ that strengthens me. That's a powerful confession of faith. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. So faith sometimes does not make sense at all. Faith does not make sense. Some believers, they gather together and they were praying for rain. Oh Lord, stop rain. Don't allow this rain to fall. Oh Lord, don't allow this rain to fall. When they were going out, they were praying for them. After the prayers, they were now going out. The Lord people of God, they took umbrella and gone. Meaning that they did not believe what they are praying for. If they are believing, they, they don't need to hold them, brother. You just go there because they have already prayed. But their faith is still weak. They refuse to exercise their faith. Meaning that they do not believe the prayers they prayed. The Bible says, when you pray, believe that you have received what you ask for, and ye shall have them. That is faith. You have to believe that you have received it before you can have it. Beloved, there is an urgent cry for Christians to change our sit down attitude, our sit down and look attitude in prayers. Beloved, when you pray, you don't just sit down. Uh -huh. You go all out to take action. You go out to take action. Don't just sit down. 
Beloved, because faith without work is a dead faith. It's useless. Many believers, unfortunately, are not follow Jesus to the upper room. We have only followed Jesus to the bakery to receive bread with fish that we eat in our hands. We follow Jesus to eat bread with fish. When Jesus was sharing bread, sharing fish, we love it, follow it. But majority of us have not followed Jesus to the upper room where believers gather together and they exercise their faith. They prayed for 10 days. They were praying. They were praying. The disciples of Jesus. Until after 10 days, the Holy Spirit fell. The Holy Spirit came. They went there with violent faith and they prayed for 10 days. Beloved people of God, Jesus aggressively commanded, he confronted demons. But most Christians, we are so scared when it comes to the demonic. Beloved people of God, Jesus spent no nights in prayer, but we do not do that. There is power in that prayer. Jesus asked his disciples, say, can't you tarry with me for one hour? So meaning that one hour is too is, is small for prayer. Can't you tarry with me for one hour? Their eyes were heavy. We sleep. They wanted to go and sleep. You know that? Some time ago, a student in the union lab, University of Lagos, in Nigeria, you know that? she confessed to money to be a money agent. Come and see Patrimonians and the guest who said, all Christians are non Christians. They were running a casket. Our Lord Jesus Christ aggressively confronted the evil part. But our weakness and fear is terrible. And you know, fear is the opposite of faith. When you don't have faith, then fear will enter into your life. Jesus resisted temptation to the point of exhaustion. But we allow people to strive around us. We sleep and slumber and claim that there is no breakthrough. We are saying there is no breakthrough. Why you sleep and slumber? Because Jesus insisted that mountain must move, but our present day Christians, we say what is going to be is going to be. What goes up must come down. What physics? What's going to be is going to be. And nothing you could do about it. It's a lie. There is a lot to do about it. Beloved, what is faith? What is violent faith now? Let us describe violent faith. Violent means action. Using physical force intended to hurt. That's what we mean by violence. Violent means action using physical force intended to hurt. Beloved, so violent faith then is an aggressive faith. When you say violent faith, you are exercising an, an aggressive faith. Violent faith, beloved, is the faith that takes action. You are not saying that I have faith, I have faith. No, you take action. Violent faith, beloved, is the faith that we call a stubborn faith. You stubbornly stick to what you are saying. Beloved, it is to stubbornly stick to, to God. You stubbornly stick to God. As from the days of John the Baptist, until now, the Bible says, they huh, violent take it by force. And from the days of John the Baptist, till now, they violent. Those who have violent faith, they take it by force. That's what the Bible is telling us. Five, violent faith is the faith that takes no for an answer. You don't want to hear that word, no. For an answer. Beloved, the faith of a widow. The widow began to torment the, you know, worldly judge. Avenge me of my adversaries. Avenge me of my adversaries. And when this widow began to, you know, 
Amen this in the ears of the judge. The judge said, Ah, no, let me not allow this woman to win me. So you have to avenge her of her adversary. That is the kind of faith we are talking about. Beloved, violent faith is an adamant faith. Violent faith is faith that knows no impossibility. Impossibility is not in the dictionary of a man and woman with violent faith. Impossibility is not in the dictionary. Let's look at some examples of violent faith in the scriptures before we pray. Number one, blind Bartimaeus. Although blind Bartimaeus was a blind man, he could not see physically, but he was spiritually alert. Despite his limitation, he cried violently in anger. He ran mad for that season. Because if he had kept quiet, Jesus would have missed, he would have missed the miracle. For Jesus did not pass through that way again. He was on his way to the cross. But the violent faith of blind Bartimaeus got him his breakthrough. Beloved, I'm praying for somebody connected to this program tonight. No matter your situation, as you exercise your faith, everyone will back you up. In the name of Jesus, as we exercise our faith in Eckham family, uh -huh, concerning this Eckham project, everyone will arise and build it. In the name of Jesus, look at example two. David, an ordinary shepherd boy, he was not a soldier. He has not been to battle before. When he saw Goliath defiling the children of Israel, he exercised violent faith. He told Saul, God that helped me to kill lion and bear, these uncircumcised Philistines shall be like one of them. Beloved, David did not have a sword in his hand, but he aggressively prophesied using violent faith against Goliath. And he eventually cut off the head of Goliath and killed him. Violent faith. Number three example. The three Hebrew men that I mentioned to you. Shedra, Mesha, and Abednego. They told the king, we are not careful to answer you in this matter. Even if our God did not save us, we are not going to bow to your great enemies. We rather burn than bow. Violent faith. Were they burnt? No. The fourth man appeared in their fire. Beloved, example four. Daniel was praying three times a day. They went to report him to the king. He continued the prayer. In fact, he goes to the top of the building to pray where they can see him and he was arrested and thrown into the lion's den. Inside that lion den, beloved, the king called him the next day. Daniel, servant of the Most High God, is your God, whom you serve, able to deliver you from the mouth of the lion? He answered, My God has sent his angels to shut up the mouth of the lion. I'm praying for somebody tonight connected to this program. Every lion in the land assigned to devour you shall be silenced by fire. In the name of Jesus, right there where you are, beloved, let's look at one more example, number five. Moses and the children of Israel, when they left Egypt, on their way to the promised land, they were confronted with the Red Sea. They got to their wit's end. They could not jump into the sea. Pharaoh said, the Pharaoh has, I mean, the wilderness has shot them in. Moses had to violently cry to God. And God said to Moses, What is in thy hand? And he said, Rod. The Lord said, Lay it on the water. What God was telling Moses, Exercise your faith. You are just holding the rod. It's not an ordinary rod. Exercise your faith. Put it in the water. That was what God was telling Moses. Beloved. And 
the Red Sea parted into two, and they passed through dry ground. I'm praying for somebody here tonight. The Red Sea of problems in any department of your life shall part into two by five. In the name of Jesus. You say, what are we going to do tonight before we start our intercessory prayers? Number one, surrender your life to Jesus. Aha. Uh -huh. Who can increase your faith? Number two, repent from every known sin. Any sin that you know that this one is sin, repent. Three, get inside the word of God. Read and digest the word of God. Swallow it. That's the word. Four, pray revelation and knowledge prayers to understand what you're fighting. A lot of Christians are fighting. They are fighting unseen battles. What they cannot see. You can't see it. But you know you are fighting something. So you need to pray revelation and knowledge prayer to be able to see those things you are fighting. But the Bible says, I fight not as one that beats the air. You are fighting. The enemy is in, on this side and you are facing this way. You are beating the air. So you must pray for revelation and knowledge prayer. For God to open your eyes, your spiritual eyes, to be able to see what you are fighting. You are not looking at people. You are not seeing people as free. You are seeing clearly in the spirit prayer. Number five. Pray different kinds of prayers. Six. Develop your faith in God. After the other of the three Hebrew men. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Make conscious efforts to put your faith in action. Like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Seven. Pray big prayers. Impossible prayers. Oh, prayers. Let demons be terrified with your prayers. Pray big prayers. The Bible says, open your mouth wide and I will feel it. That's what God is saying. What God is trying to tell us is that we should pray big prayers. And I pray that as you pray tonight, God and you exercise the faith, God is surprised you in the name of Jesus. Find the Holy Father in Jesus. Never pray. Now, right there where you are, I want you to close your eyes. You are joining us in this program tonight, and you are not born again. You have not yet surrendered your life to Jesus. Say, Pastor, I want to surrender my life to Jesus. Uh -huh. I want to get born again so that I can be able to exercise my faith correctly. Just lay your hand on your chest and say this after me. Say, Father, I come before you tonight. I know that I'm a sinner, Lord Jesus. He said, if I confess my sin and forsake them, you will come into my life. Come to my life, Lord Jesus. Take control of my life. From tonight, I renounce Satan and the devil. I enter the kingdom of light. Write my name in the book of life and put the devil to shame. Thank you, Holy Father, for in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. You say that prayer with me. Uh -huh. Make sure you are worshipping in every Bible believing church. Both in Eka, body of Christ, and the rest of the body of Christ. God bless you mightily in Jesus' name. There are two prayers I want us to pray before we start to intercede for all the things we want to intercede for. Two prayers. But you sing this song loud and clear. God of wonders. God of wonders. Come and do your wonders in Eka. What a wonder, God of wonders. God of wonders. Come and do what only you can do. God of wonders. God of wonders in Eka. God of wonders. Come and do your wonders in Eka. Oh yes. God of wonders, God of wonders, come and do what only you can do. Right there where you are, I want you to lay your right hand on your chest and say this for yourself with goodness. Say, I reject every spirit of doubt, fear, and discouragement. 
In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and reject it. Every spirit of doubt, every spirit of fear, every spirit of discouragement, I reject you. You are not my portion. I reject every spirit of doubt, every spirit of discouragement. In the name of Jesus, in Jesus, name of pray. That's right. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Say, oh God, arise. Increase my faith in you, even in difficult times. In the name of Jesus, oh God, arise. Increase my faith in you, even in these difficult times. In the name of Jesus, oh God, arise. Increase my faith in you, in these difficult times. In the name of Jesus, oh God, arise. Increase my faith in you, in these difficult times. In Jesus, never pray. The Bible says, in the last days, perilous time shall come. So we are in the last days. A lot of troubles all over the place. We need to exercise our faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. And as you exercise your faith, everyone will back you up in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Father. Sing this song loud and clear before we intercede. We have several intercessory prayers to do. We want to pray for the enemy of Qatar. We want to pray. Aha. Uh -huh. Want to pray for the enemy of Qatar and his family. We want to pray for the nations of Qatar. We want to pray for aircraft worship buildings. We want to pray for all the aircraft member churches to have the capacity to contribute to aircraft building projects. We want to pray. For aha, uh -huh, Eka calendar of activities this year. We want to pray, beloved, for the Honorable Bishop, Bishop Bida Roberts, the Chairman of Eka, and we want to pray for Eka African churches and all other church denominations. Praise the name of the Lord. These are the areas we want to pray about. But before we do that, sing this song to Lord and Pierre. We cannot fail, we cannot fail, because of Jesus. We cannot fail, we cannot fail, we cannot fail, because of Jesus. We shall not fail, we will succeed, we will succeed, because of Jesus. We will succeed, we are personalities. I cannot fail, I cannot fail, because of Jesus. I cannot fail, I will succeed, I will succeed, because of Jesus. I will succeed. Amen. Right there where you are. Our first session of prayers is for the enemy of Qatar. Aha. Shei Tamim bin Amar al Tani. First Timothy 2 1 2 says, I exhort therefore that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks. Be made for all men, for kings, and for all that are in authority, that we may live a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. Beloved, let's open our mouth and begin to pray for the enemy of Qatar, Shei Kamin bin Ahmad Al Tani. Father, we pray that the kingly authority and the power that God has given unto the king shall continue to grow stronger and stronger till the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. The power of supernatural wisdom, power of supernatural knowledge to continue to steer the ship of the nation of Qatar to the hour of accomplishment shall rest permanently upon him. In the name of Jesus, let us pray that the great vision that the enemy and his covenant are for Qatar, 10 years vision, 20 years, 40 years, 100 years and beyond, the plan that they have, that they have put together for the nations of Qatar shall come to pass and become brighter and brighter. In the name of Jesus, let's pray for the enemy that the enemy shall not fail, he shall not fall, he shall not be disgraced. In the name of Jesus, he will continue to grow from strength to strength, from power to power, and from glory to glory. He shall be well with him and his entire family. Thank you, Holy Father, for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen.
right there where you are, second session of prayers is prayers for all nations. For all nations. 4 John chapter 5, verse 19. And we know that you are God and your word light in wickedness. Let us pray that the peace of God that passeth all understanding shall reign in all the nations of the world. In the name of Jesus, let us now and pray that war we cease in the world. Jesus, the Prince of Peace, will bring peace between all the nations that are at war with each other. That the Prince of Peace will begin to reign in those nations. Let's pray that the wickedness going on in the nations of the world, orchestrated by Satan, should cease completely, should come to an end. In the name of Jesus, let us pray for mercy of God upon the entire citizens of the nations of the world. Let's begin to pray for the peace to reign in all nations of the world in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Peace shall reign in all nations of the world in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The next session of prayer is prayer for aircraft worship building. God has been so faithful. He has given the land. It remains for us to take action. Like I said, we need to exercise violent faith to enter into that promise which God has given to us. God can never fail. Nehemiah chapter 2 verse 18. He says, Then I told them of the hand of my God, which was good upon me, as also the king's word that he has spoken unto me. And they said, Let us rise up and build. So they strengthen their hand for their good works. Let us pray that the Lord will strengthen the hands of the people of God in the entire entire family to rise up and start to build as God has promised and given the land. In the name of Jesus, let us pray for favor. Favor of God to rest upon the chairman of Eka, Bishop Bidarabus, and the entire team as they pursue after the permit for the construction of this building. Let the Spirit of God, counsel of God, might, and power of God go with them as they go. In the name of Jesus, let the angels of God go before them and make a way for them. As it is written in Malachi 3 1, the Bible says, I will send my messenger ahead of you, who shall prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom you see shall suddenly come to his temple. Even the messenger of the covenant, whom you delight in, behold, he shall come, say the Lord of hosts. Father, we pray that you will intervene and go with the members of the team for the construction of the building. In the name of Jesus. Our next session of prayers is prayers for all Eckhart member churches to contribute to the Eckhart building project. Beloved, in Psalm 110, verse 3, it says, In the day of his power, his people shall be willing. Father, let your zeal to contribute to Eckhart building project be released upon all the Eckhart member churches. In the name of Jesus, O oh God arise, let money meet money in the account of all the Eckhart member churches to have the capacity to contribute for the building project. Father, let the overseers and leaders of Eckhart member churches hear the word of the Lord. Favor Eckhart concerning the building project. Psalm 102, verse 13. Say, Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion. For the time to favor, yea, the set time has come. For thy servant take pleasure in Aston and favor the doors thereof. So the earth shall fear the name of the Lord. And all the kings of the earth are glory. When the Lord shall build on Zion, it shall appear in his glory. Let's pray that God should arise and provide for all the card member churches to have the capacity to contribute to the earth and building project by the mercies of God. In the name of Jesus. Let us pray this one. So, gate of hell, you shall not prevail against the building of a worship center. In the name of Jesus, the Lord said, I will build my church, and the gate of hell shall not prevail. We decree, gate of hell shall not prevail against the Eckhart building project. In the name of Jesus, Jesus Christ, you are the builder of your church. 
Arise, strengthen all the Eckhart member churches for the building of the worship center. In the name of Jesus, Father, you are the great provider. Arise and provide all necessary things for the building of Eckhart worship center. Let's open our mouth and pray. Sing this song loud and clear. It's our great provider. Great provider is our great provider. Great provider, he will surely provide for us. Provide for us. So God arise and supply physical, spiritual, financial, material, human resources for the building of that worship center. In the name of Jesus, oh God arise and supply. Supply everything needed for the building of that worship center. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus. May we pray. Our next session of prayers is prayer for Eckhart calendar of activities this year 2024 to be fulfilled. This includes Eckhart Family Day, which is yearly, Eckhart of the City Day, nightly prayer and devotion by Eckhart overseers and pastors, activities of various church denominations under the license of Eckhart. The Bible says, In the year of his power, his people shall be willing. Let the zeal of the Lord. Be released upon the people of God to cooperate with all the activities of God of Eckhart family this year as in other years. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Father. In Jesus, we will pray. This next prayer is for Honorable Bishop Bida, the chairman of Eckhart. I want us to pray this prayer for Bishop. God has already anointed him, but I want us to activate it to begin to operate in full capacity. The Bible says, and they go from one nation to another, from one people to another people. It suffered no man to do them wrong. Yea, in the book came for their sake, saying, Touch not my anointed, and do my prophet no harm. I want us to cry out loud and clear because the bishop will be going all over the world to talk about the building projects. Uh -huh. So we need to pray for him. Number one prayer. Say, anointing of touch not. Come upon Bishop Bida and family. In the name of Jesus, as he goes about concerning this building project, anointing of touch not. Fall upon Bishop Bida and family. In the name of Jesus, let him begin to receive the anointing. In Jesus, may we pray. Say, end the fire of God from the throne of God in heaven. Bishop Bida and family. Envelope there in the name of Jesus. And the fire of God from the throne of God in heaven. Envelope we shall be our family. In the name of Jesus. Receive the end of fire. Receive it. Receive it. In Jesus. Now we pray. The Bible says, the angel of God encountered by them that fear him, and he will deliver them. Say, angels of living God, arise and come down about Bishop with our rubbles and family. 24 hours daily, in the name of Jesus, in the of living God, and come and about the shop of the and his family, 24 hours daily, in Jesus, may we pray. The fourth prayer, I want us to pray for him. Isaiah 61 says, Arise, say, shine, for your light is gone, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. He said, Although darkness shall cover the earth, draws darkness the people, but as for you, your body shall arise, and his glory shall be seen upon you. You will shout with boldness like this. As you are praying for the bishop, you are praying for yourself. Say, Bishop, be that, and family, arise and shine. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and pray for him. Bishop, be that, and family, wherever you are, arise and shine. In the name of Jesus, arise and shine. In Jesus, may we pray. Pray this fifth one for him. Say, any power. Spirit of personality and signed to attack Bishop Bilaro Good and his family as a result of his ministerial assignment. Wherever you are, collapse and die. In the name of Jesus, any power, spirit of personality and signed to attack Bishop Bilaro Good and his family as a result of his ministerial assignment. Wherever you are, collapse and die. In Jesus, they will pray. Now, last thing we pray for. African churches. Let's pray to God 
that God will turn the heart of all the overseers of Eckhart African churches to cooperate with the vision of Eckhart. Let's pray that we should all rise up to contribute to the success of the story of Eckhart as we enjoy the benefits of the villa. Aha. Thank you, Father. Let us also contribute to the growth and development of Eckhart. There is power in unity that God should unite all entire African churches so that none will be lagged behind in their responsibility to enter the body of Christ, especially this period of the worship center building. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you, Father. Right there where you are, I pray for all those that are in need because of the situation of Qatar now, those that are yet to get a job, I pray a profitable job into your life. In the name of Jesus, those that are, aha, uh -huh, they have worked, but they are not paid salary. I pray that everyone, every company that is owing you, shall begin to pay up immediately. In the name of Jesus, every of God will trouble them until they pay you. In the name of Jesus, I pray for all those that are having one challenges or the other, that the power behind your challenges shall be permanently disgraced. In the name of Jesus, I pray for anyone, both those who are connected to this program and those who are not connected to this program, and you are sick, whether in your body uh -huh, and your soul or spirit, right there where you are. The Bible says in Isaiah 53 5 that Jesus was wounded for your transgression, he was bruised for your iniquity, the chastisement of the beast was upon him, and with his stripes you are healed. Let the healing power of God. Begin to flow from the top of your head to the sole of your feet. From the top of your head to the sole of your feet. You are here in Jesus' name. It is well with you and your entire family. I pray for all those who are requesting for prayers. One way or the other, God will answer your prayers by fire. In the name of Jesus, the Lord said, Why are you speaking about you? Say, Be careful for nothing, but by prayer and supplication, thanksgiving, let your request be made, made known unto God. I pray that all the requests are presented to God tonight shall receive speedy answers. It shall be well with you and your entire family. Thank you, Holy Father, for in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Right there, right back. This is where we stop tonight. And we we'll continue next month. If Jesus tarries is coming for another topic that will be given to us. Let's share the grace in fellowship. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us. Days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house and presence of God forever and ever. Amen. Seven powerful hallelujah. Let's go. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, Jesus, cover us with your blood and love as we go in your name, in your name. Mighty God, cover us with your fire and power, Jesus, cover us with your blood and love. Amen. God bless you all. Bye for now.